What's going on guys, my name is Matt and today we're taking a look at a surprisingly cheap graphics card that might just be perfect for your next budget build. This is an RX 580 8GB being sold as new on AliExpress for only $65 with some listings for similar new 580s selling for as little as $55 with free shipping. In today's video we're going to be talking about the card itself, whether or not these cards are actually new, go over gaming performance, and finally answer the question of whether or not you should consider picking one of these up. So this is a Ming Zhao branded card that I picked up a month or so ago on AliExpress for around $65 with free shipping. It took a few weeks to get to me, which is something to keep in mind when ordering from AliExpress. The box it came in is very nondescript with just a couple of logos, and on the inside is just the card itself wrapped in bubble wrap and protected by some closed cell foam. On first inspection, the card looks brand new, but how could this be? The RX 580 originally released over 6 years ago, making it hard for me to believe there would still be new stock available. And that's because this card probably isn't actually new. This RX 580 is likely remanufactured using parts from old cards, meaning they likely took stuff like an old GPU die and memory chips and slapped them onto a new PCB with a new cooler. This is fine in my opinion, but it does make me question the ethics of listing a card like this as new. One other important thing to note is these 580s aren't like normal ones you would have purchased 4-6 to six years ago. These are the 2048 SP versions, SP stands for stream processors and the 2048 denotes the number these have versus the 2304 normal 580s have. This basically just means these 580s are going to perform a little worse than their standard counterparts. With that being said, I would hold your judgement until the benchmark section of this video to see how exactly this card performs. Getting back to the specific card I purchased, this Ming Zhao 580 features a dual fan design, metal backplate, and an adequately sized heatsink. It looks like it may be all aluminum, but we'll open it up later in the video to confirm. This card requires a single 6 pin external power connector, and other than the green PCB, nothing stands out as strange or out of the ordinary visually in my opinion. Taking all this into account, this is still at worst a $65 refurbished graphics card with 8GB of video memory and a amount of raw gaming horsepower. So the real question is, how does it perform? To test this card, I paired it up with an Intel Core i3-12100 and 16GB of DDR4 RAM to see how this card games in a budget system. I originally tested this combo in my $400 build guide, but also tested some other games for this video and I'm going to go over all of those performance results now. The first game tested is Minecraft at 1080p with fast graphics and both 12 chunk render and view distance. Just running around, I saw a very solid average of 119 FPS with 1% lows of 77, which is great performance in my opinion. Now as a bit of a worst case scenario, I equipped an Elytra and some rockets and flew around, which resulted in a 106 FPS average with not so great 1% lows of 18. Overall, this performance in Minecraft is very solid in my opinion and I personally would have no problems playing it with these settings and with this level of performance. Moving on to the next game which is Rust, I tested at 1080p with most of the sliders set to medium. I'm not sure what optimal Rust settings are so if you have suggestions leave them in the comments below. I just hopped onto a few servers and ran around to see what performance was like. Doing this resulted in an acceptable 52 FPS average with 1% lows of 34. This felt smooth and responsive so I think this performance is fine, but you could definitely turn down and optimize the settings to get an average above 60 FPS. In Fortnite, I tested at 1080p with performance mode enabled, I set the view distance to ultra and textures to high, I hopped into a Team Rumbles match to test and ended up getting an average of 193 FPS with 1% lows of 40. This was solid performance in my opinion, there were a few stutters here and there but that's kind of to be expected with Fortnite. Overall, I think a card and system like this works really well at playing Fortnite. Next up is Overwatch 2 at 1080p using the medium preset. I tested by going into some no limit games. Doing this resulted in a 135 FPS average with 1% lows of 75. This performance is very good in my opinion and should be enough for even competitive play. With that being said, I'm not sure if people are even still playing this game, so if you're a current Overwatch 2 player, sound off in the comment section below. Next up is Valorant which I tested at 1080p low settings, playing in some deathmatches. 
Doing this resulted in a 284 FPS average with 1% lows of 164. Obviously Valorant is pretty easy to run so getting great performance like this was to be expected and shows that even a $65 graphics card is still kind of overkill for a game like Valorant. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, which is probably the hardest to run game I tested, I drove around like I normally do at 1080p low settings to see what kind of performance I could get. Doing this resulted in a 56 FPS average with 1% lows of 45. There definitely were some major dips here and there, but overall the experience was fine. This is definitely one of those games where this card will struggle a bit and getting 60 FPS at 1080p may not be realistic. Next up is Rainbow Six Siege at 1080p medium settings, which I tested using the built-in benchmark. Doing this resulted in a very solid 167 FPS average with 1% lows of 130, which should be enough performance for competitive play. In Borderlands 3 at 1080p medium, I again tested using the built-in benchmark, Doing this resulted in a 61 FPS average and 1% lows of 49, showing that slightly older AAA games will run perfectly fine on this card at 1080p with 60 FPS. Finally, I tested Far Cry 6 using the built-in benchmark at 1080p medium settings. This resulted in a 59 FPS average with 1% lows of 50, again showing this card is capable of nearly 60 FPS in a lot of AAA titles at 1080p. Overall, performance on this card is great, especially when you take into account it only cost me $65 and is 8GB of video memory. In terms of temps, they were also super solid. I had this card in a relatively closed off case with only one case fan as exhaust, so not the most ideal scenario. With that being said, the GPU stayed between the low 60s to low 70s most of the time while gaming, with it peaking at around 75 degrees which is pretty impressive in my opinion. So this again got me wondering if the cooler is using copper or if it's all aluminum like I originally thought. I ended up needing to remove 6 screws to release the PCB from the cooler and quickly cleaned off some of the thermal paste. Just like I thought, this is an all aluminum cooler, but as we just talked about, temps were fine so this doesn't bother me at all. Taking a closer look at the PCB, everything looks clean and new, and what's interesting is the GPU die doesn't have any printed info on it to denote the die model. With all this being said, this does look like a new card, but again, it's very likely that it was remanufactured. So now that you've seen the card, understand what it is, and have seen how it performs, it's now time to talk about whether or not you should consider picking one of these up. Like I said, this is likely a refurbished card, and as far as I can tell, you're not going to get any warranty with it. With that being said, for $65, I still think it's a pretty solid deal. If you're building a budget rig, I think this could be a great option, especially knowing you're not going to get anything new for around this price point. If you're cool with a truly used card, you can snag a full fat RX 588GB from eBay for around the same price which will perform better. So yeah, I can actually recommend this card, especially if all you care about is esports gaming at 1080p. Where you'll run into issues is if you're trying to play the latest and greatest AAA titles as this barely keeps up now with those and may not give a playable experience in those types of games for much longer. But if you understand that and are cool with it then I say go for it. I'll have this card along with a few other options for graphics cards in the description if you want to check those out. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.